Hi, this is James from Mission. And in this series of videos, I'm going to be showing you how you can get the most out of your Mission Gemini series amplifier. In this first video, we're going to cover the USB audio interface. And I'll show you how to connect it up to your computer and how using software running on your Mac or PC, you can use it to record, play back and practice. All right, let's get started. So here's a picture of the back panel of a Gemini 1. The Gemini 2 has the same connections on the back. And you'll see here the USB interface. In the package that came with your Gemini, you will have received this USB cable. So you're going to take this, the larger B end, and connect that to the input on the back of the Gemini. Then take the A end and connect that to a USB port on your computer. If you're going to be recording with a live instrument, then you'll need to connect that up to input two on the back of the Gemini here. And you'll do that just using a regular TS mono instrument cable. That's pretty much all there is to it for connecting up. You'll just need to plug in the power cable and turn it on and then you'll be good to go. Okay, so we've connected up our Gemini and now we're gonna run up some of our applications. Now in this demo, I'm using a Mac, which the Gemini device is supported natively, so we don't need to install any special software. If you're running a PC with Windows, you'll need to install the drivers and uh, the Gemini comes with this USB stick um, and that includes on it the documentation and some videos and also um, the USB drivers for Windows. So you'll just run the executable and that will take you through the installation of the Gemini USB drivers for Windows. Since we have a Mac here, we don't need to do any additional driver installation, so we can just get started. All right, if you want to use the, um, the Gemini USB device as your default audio, you can do that from System Preferences. So we'll bring up System Preferences here, and then we'll go to Sound. And this will show us all the available drivers for input and output. So here are the three devices that I have installed on my Mac right now. The internal speakers that are built into my Mac. The um, Sentrance Mic Port Pro is the um, USB microphone interface that I use for recording the video. And then the Xcore USB 2.0. This is our Gemini interface. Okay. So I'm going to set that as my output which is done, and then we're good to go. Okay, if we want to, we can, uh, we can check the audio settings for the device now that it's installed. So let's bring up um, the audio MIDI devices in a Mac, and it's your uh, control panel uh, sound properties on uh, a PC. Uh, we'll give you a similar type of thing. Here on the Mac, we can see here are our different audio devices, uh, inputs and outputs that are installed on the system. And here is our X-Core USB audio, which is the Mission Gemini's USB audio interface. And then here we can set up the different uh, formats for the input and output. Um, you can see down here, here are the different uh, bit rates that are supported by the Gemini audio interface. And we have a uh, 44.1 kilohertz right away up to uh, 19.2 and uh, you can also support over here whether it's a uh, 16 bit or 24 bit um, 48 and uh, 24 I think is the default so we'll leave it there for now okay so uh, now we're all configured let's see how it sounds um, there's all sorts of different applications that uh, that you can use that use a USB audio interface. Uh, everything from a garage band to, uh, to Pro Tools will uh, work with the Gemini. Um, we're going to do a few different examples here. And let's start with just a standalone um, guitar emulation interface. And I've been using uh, S-Gear from Scuffer Amps, which is an excellent uh, piece of software that runs... Uh, on Mac and on Windows, either as a standalone application or as a plug-in to your digital audio workstation. So I'm going to use it in standalone here and I already have it up and running. So here we go. And then I have this uh, Line 6 Variax guitar plugged into the um, input 2 on the back of the Gemini. 
So let's crank it up, see how it sounds. So that's a kind of lead sound and then um, because we have a full range amp it's capable of, um, of running all sorts of uh, different emulations and cab sims that we may be running here uh, on S gear so for example um, if I set this patch on the um, set this setting on the variax to an acoustic and then I have an acoustic patch here um, on S gear and I'm just using a little iRig blue board um, Bluetooth uh, MIDI controller uh, down here on the floor to switch between patches in S gear. So here's an acoustic patch. Try something a little more fuller. So there's an acoustic, and then uh, we can try. Maybe let's try some single coils here and then I have a patch with uh, I think some chorus type effects on here. Let's try that. So there we go, that's, uh, that's working pretty good using the guitar just into S gear. Okay, let's take a quick look at using Gemini as a recording interface. Here's Logic X Pro, and um, a little earlier I recorded this song using the Gemini USB audio interface with Logic Pro. And I added some guitar tracks that I recorded and then some uh, drum and bass tracks and used some loops that were available out of logic um, and I'm playing them back through the Gemini using that as a monitor so let's just check that out make sure we can hear it okay all right that sounds good and then also of course um, as we saw earlier I have my guitar plugged in using uh, using S gear so that should be working okay and that's also coming through the Gemini uh, amp and speakers, so it all sounds nice and together. So let's give it a go because this is a this is a useful feature of Gemini being able to uh, play back recorded tracks and then play along with them, um, and everything all sounds nice and together. So let's take a break for a few minutes. I'll play all the way through the song, and uh, I'll be back in a minute. <laughs>
we're just about coming to the end of this first Gemini tutorial video. Hopefully you found it useful and you'll be able to put some of the examples into practice in your own applications. I'll be back in the second in the series when we'll look at how you can use Gemini as a learning tool in conjunction with some material on the internet. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.